Hello and welcome to Art Snacks. In this episode, we're going to draw a python, a python. But I want you to see first that I'm drawing on the back of a worksheet that's already been used before. Because I like to recycle paper whenever I can because I don't want to use up all the world's resources. Um, so recycling is a good thing. So if you're recycling in your classroom, yay! So today we're going to draw a python. And so to get started, we're going to draw kind of a donut. So first we're going to draw just sort of a, a donut. We're going to make a, a donut shape. And we can make sort of a hole in the middle. It's a donut! Okay, now to make it look more like a python, what we'll do is python is going to be wrapped around. So and a python is a kind of a snake that attacks its prey in a very interesting way. A python squeezes its prey. All right, and it's, it's called a certain kind of snake. It's called a constrictor. Door. And there's boa constrictors, and they do the same thing. They kind of squeeze their prey. So if we started like this, we have this little shape like this. It's going like this, and the python's head's going to be coming over this way. And this is the python's body. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw the python's body kind of coming around like this. Now, I've really made this thing kind of big on purpose because a big part of a python and why a python looks like a python is its pattern, right? The shape the shapes, the colors that it has on its body that make it easy to identify as a python. So when you see one of these, you stay away from it, right? So this python here. Now, um, so there's the head and there's the body. So let's go ahead now and draw this part here. It's coming through like this. And this part's going to come around. And look how fat this python is. And you might say, wow, Kevin, this is really thick. Well, it's true. I mean, a python is a very muscular, muscular snake because if it's going to squeeze its prey, squeeze them, basically squeeze all the air out of them and then swallow them and swallow them whole. A lot of times they just swallow big animals whole. Their jaws open up really big and they'll swallow them and they don't have to eat for a long time. I want you to find out everything you can about pythons. I want you to become a python expert. Uh, so when we draw these pictures, you, you're not just drawing, but you're getting smarter and smarter about these animals. I'm going to start drawing patterns on here now, sort of some patterns on this um, python. Why do they have patterns? Why do these creatures have patterns on their bodies? Why do you think? I'm going to draw an eye right here. Okay. Why do you think these creatures have patterns on their bodies? They're trying to do what? They're trying to do what? They're, they're camouflaged and they're trying to blend in with their surroundings so that some predator that wants to eat a python won't even see them or some prey that they're sneaking up on won't see them coming and it will give them an advantage out there in the wild. So it's hard to see them because when they're crawling against some dry brush or some dry grass and they're tan and dark brown and these patterns look like rocks or whatever environment they happen to be in, then they're perfectly suited to hide in that environment. So this is what they do, what animals, one of the, one of the things animals have, an adaptation that they have that helps them succeed out there in the wild. So, and you don't have to make these patterns the same as mine. No two snakes will have the same patterns. It's almost like a fingerprint. They're each going to be different. So don't worry if yours looks exactly like mine. Let see, this is kind of fun almost like an abstract drawing. I can decide how I want it to look. Right now I'm going to decide. I'm going to have, I think I'm going to use like dark brown and tan. And this is my crayon box here. You can see I have a few. <laughs> so I can dig around through here. And if you have a box like me, <laughs> it's kind of fun, isn't it? Digging through there and finding the crayon that you want. But here's a nice, here's a nice kind of a brown. And now let's see if I can find a tan. And if I can't find a tan, I can always use something that kind of reminds me of tan. This is apricot. And actually, I'm going to use these two. So these two will look good together. These two, it could also be yellow or gold that I could use. This is a apricot, too. I'm going to use that one. So I'll use these two right here for my two. And put this back over here. All right, Python, it's time to get you colored. So I'm going to choose which part this is going to be dark and which part this is going to be light. And actually, this brown looks more like a cranberry. Mm, there we go. You see, I'm not worrying too much. Every drawing you do makes you better at drawing. In 100 drawings from now, you're going to be amazing. 
So don't worry about every single drawing. I mean, have fun with them, but don't worry so much. Some people worry so much they don't even start drawing. They're so busy worrying about making a mistake, they don't start. And the biggest mistake you can make is not to draw. So just draw. Go for it. See what happens. Can't wait to put that other color in there and see how that looks together. Oh, this thing could be, this python could be in the grass or on the ground. I think I'll make it on the ground, just kind of sitting there on the dry dirt. And that'll stand out really well, make good contrast. Now, if I want things to stand out better, I can go back after, and I can darken things up. I can darken up the outline. Now let's color these different color. And I'm thinking about what color that background is going to be. Because I don't want it to be sitting, if I don't color a background, then this poor python sitting in the snow. Being a reptile that can't regulate its own body temperature, the python's not going to be very happy in the snow. So I don't want that to look like snow. A lot of kids, they draw something and they just want to be done. I'm done. That's what they say. I'm done. They just want to be done. I'll tell you, I've never met a kid that became really great at something when their only focus was to be done. Being done well, that's the word I want you to add to the end of what you say. I'm done well. You should see how well I did um, instead of just saying done. Done isn't the goal. Doing a good job should be the goal. Let's make the ground gray because I haven't used gray in this picture, and it should stand out well from the background if I make it gray. So I'm going to use this gray here. And around the outside. Now this is like a shot from above, so I don't have to draw every single thing. But I do want enough color in the background to make the python stand out in its surroundings. So just a little bit of color, and in this case, gray. Okay. Okay, and there's my Python. See you next time.